guys, we are back in the land of the Giants. My favorite property on earth, the Missouri 100. We're gonna do a little bit of shed hunting, do a little bit of habitat management, tree stand stuff, off season tasks. As far as last year goes, I would say this property underachieved. Now it was not a bad year by any means. The reason I think it underachieved from an antler production standpoint is the, the conditions we were dealing with, the drought, all those things. There are 170, 80, 200 inch year in this neighborhood. We know that. So it's just a matter of uh, getting the right conditions, putting in the work. Um, but more so this weekend, it's about just having fun, getting out and enjoying, uh, enjoying the property, getting some work done, and just improving on things. So this is the beginning of 2024, I guess. We'll see what we find. Right, guys so thankfully I got Nick along with me and, and sometimes it's, it's even myself it's good to get a second pair of eyes on a property we kind of found this knob not too far away from where my dad killed his buck and actually where I borderline area jumped um, the gun buck that I killed I found this really nice little knob and as I'm sitting here like I'm starting to like look at exactly what's going on in this given area and it's kind of like that nest it's that nest that a lot of time I talk I talk about with clients about creating Sometimes we do it through a little bit of hinging. I don't love hinge cuts, don't get carried away with them, but um, there's like this nest. There's, there's, there's just like all this brush and these, this down timber, kind of in a circle, half moon-ish, um, creating this nest. And sure enough, there's beds here. So it's kind of putting the puzzle pieces together now in future years. This is an area we're gonna keep an eye on for future bucks. So kind of, kind of pumps me up. One thing I hear a lot of people say when it comes to buck bedding is, oh, I found his bed, I found him. Guys, these deer use a lot of different beds, and I think we just found another possible bed, kind of on this little rock outcropping. All of a sudden it drops down, and it's like a mattress-sized flat. Um, even a little tree if you wanted to lean up against, and the way I look at it, like, if we had some sort of northerly wind, you could smell everything behind him, and one of our access trails is right up there. So how many deer are bedding in these spots? Once again, you know, busting us, but also once again, I look around at this tim down timber from, from our timber cut, and it kind of created a natural nest. Well, guess where the bed is? So sometimes you find these natural ones, sometimes you create them through through down trees, or maybe a little hinging, don't get carried away with the hinging, but this is one of those spots that we're gonna mark on the map, and uh, you never know what comes out of here. Maybe a big old buck. Bad shot on it. Hey. Ooh. Pretty busted up on there. A lot of bucks of this caliber. A lot of lot of up and coming young bucks on this property. So we're on the board. It's actually the third one we found today. We found a couple in the field. Sorry mom. We already found those sheds. We didn't tell her she's gonna find us when she watches this video. And I think we're even gonna place this one so she can find it too market on a waypoint so we make sure we pick it up today but got my mom and dad out here uh, cameraman Josh is showing up later today so it's a good day in the woods beautiful day wish the conditions were a little bit better a little more gloomy but I'm not I'm not complaining with a sunny day in uh, late February so we got one well we found another good sized tree with just some brow tine marks in it and a good historical robin of course underneath it you know a nice little bed so it's just another one of those nests that has I don't want to call it naturally taking place because we did some logging in here, but the tops fell where the tops fell. And, you know, a lot of guys get worked up about the way this stuff looks after doing a timber cut. It created natural nests, and we found at least four different good buck beds, buck bedding areas along this ridge system. So I'm not mad about it. I mean, it doesn't look pretty, but guys, good deer habitat does not. And sometimes we get a little bit worried about it looking pretty versus it being good, good habitat. So. Clearly the cut by itself without doing anything overly strategic has worked. Probably a six year old, been past him for a while. Um, you know, probably gonna pass him like six more years. Freshy. Another one in the books. So 
one thing that we've noticed, well, a lot of times we like to strategically place a lot of the bedding on the western portion of the property, put the food on the east, predominant winds. That's all we're playing here. And as they come out of this ridge top bedding, on this ridge that runs the entire width of the property east and west, what they do is they come out of that bedding and then they ride the top third of it on either side. And one of those sets, I'd say about 150 yards out of the bedding area is where I killed within two, within three days of hunting in a row, um, had, had killed two bucks. I missed a buck there a day prior. Um, and not far away, I actually missed the buck that I shot it with a gun, similar, similar area. But what they're doing is they're peeling off this bedding on the ridge top and then riding the top thirds on either side, not down the middle of the ridge, but the top third all the way out to our destination food. And they just kind of almost Y. You know, they're going, they, they Y. They either go around one side or the other, the top of this ridge. We're in an open hardwoods right now, but it is littered with big buck mature rubs. So sometimes the edge is in all physical um, timber, uh, thick stuff. A lot of times it's topographical too. So it's something to think about in hill country. The main reason, in theory, I think why these bucks are running or these deer are running the top thirds on either side is that it would allow them to, depending on if it's a north or south wind, this is the east or west running ridge, they could run either top third of the side and smell what's on the opposite side of it, honestly. I think that probably plays a role. That makes sense in my head. A lot of times deer just do what deer want to do and we give them too much credit, but I do think I can make sense of that given situation. If we had a north wind, they'd be on the, on the, on the south facing side of that top third ridge and the opposite um, on the north facing side on, on southerly winds. I think that could play a role as to why they are on either side of the ridge. So a lot of guys would look at the scrape and say, oh, there's a scrape and it's close to our destination food source, we should hunt this. But if we'd look a little bit further and talk about what we've talked about a little bit earlier in the day and how these deer use this ridge system, east and west, um, I would think that this scrape is more likely to get hit on a northerly wind. Why would that be? Because it's on the south side of the uh, of the ridge, and so north wind would blow over that ridge. Bucks would run the south side of it, smell everything from over on that side, and see everything on this side, see their way down into the bottom, on their way out to their destination food source. So, I don't love hunting scrapes. If I had to be honest with you, I love hunting the closest scrape to the bed. In this case, this would not be it. But if those deer were on day, uh, you know, hitting the food source in daylight hours. Um, well, I don't have to go back to the bedding and this is a scrape I'd probably hunt in that given scenario on a northwest wind, northeast wind, when he's running the south side of this, this ridge face. Ish. Not great. There's a big one out there we just can't seem to find. We've only covered about half the farm. We picked up about five. A lot of a lot of dinker eight pointers. That's what this farm's got right now. The genetics in general end up being eight pointers. Um, but no, we found a, a handful. So now we're gonna go hit the north side of my farm and then go hit a neighboring farm, which we've seen some footage of in the past, and it is the best farm I've ever seen in my life. So hopefully we pick up uh, the old five-year-old and I'll be happy. We'll see. One shed hunting tip for when it's sunny is wear sunglasses and the sun doesn't get in your eyes. <laughs> now in reality, guys, it's just tough. Um, 
when it's sunny i'd put the sun at your back and that's about all you can do or you try and get out early in the morning or hit that last light it seems like last year when we hunt, when we shed hunted this property that oh, all the spots that we walked all day we walked in the last hour and it's like they magically appeared so go early go late put the sun to your back picked up another one seems like a lot of our one and a half year old bucks are kind of supporting racks like this we don't get a lot of spikes here we did pick up one spike but maybe our two and three year olds are kind of supporting more stuff like this and I think it just had to do with that bad drought year. Like I really do expect our three-year-olds to be in the 140, and we do have three-year-olds really, if I think about it, in that 140 to 150 range. But another decent antler. We're finding all right sides though. So we found, I don't know, half a dozen, maybe a touch more, give or take, all on the same side. No match sets yet. So we're missing a lot. These conditions are, are, are killing us, but we're getting uh, we're getting on the board. I don't see the other one. You would think something of this size and starting to get bigger, they wouldn't hold both of them for very long shake it off. We'll go on our 50 yards to find it. Well, I'm pretty sure we just found our target buck up the tree. Squirrel must have grabbed it. Coon, maybe. Oh, that's a strong squirrel. I don't know. I'm kind of flabbergasted. Found two decent ones. I'm 90% sure. I got my parents rolling up the road right here. We're going to wait tell them to look in the tree holy smokes that almost looks staged I've never seen them up that high squirrel must have grabbed it big old squirrel oh I didn't even know it did that I, I know for a fact that you missed one back there I found I found one I didn't touch it. Look, look behind me. We just noticed it. You're, you're not looking high enough. Oh, for crying out loud. I, I think that's the big one. Up on that tree? Yeah, I think a squirrel must have grabbed it. We just yeah. Nick, Nick saw it. I said I was looking up in the branches. Yeah, because he said look in the branches. Because they're hanging it. out of things. Go grab it. We, ju we just walked out here and said we're going to push this to back to the Maverick. Well guys, that'll wrap up shed day. If I had to be honest with you, I'm not a huge shed hunter. Um, and on top of that, our conditions weren't great. So a lot of times I end up looking for sign and I know I walked right by a lot of a, a lot of, uh, a lot of sheds. Pretty much, I don't think we found a match set today. So that just goes to show what's still out there on this property. Did not find my big five and a half year old. I know he's out there someplace. I'm pretty sure he ended up um, dropping in late January. So um, it was a good day overall. A lot of up-and-comers, a lot of up-and-comers, a lot of good three-year-olds for next year, and just, uh, just you know, a lot of those good bucks that make a property fun to hunt. So that's going to put a wrap on shed day. Tomorrow, we get to work.